All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for tuning in in the backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, as you can see, we're in the backyard this morning. There's no wind. There's no rain. So, hey, we're in the backyard this morning. So, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Hey, shout out to Miss Rachel, who's rocking with us this morning. Hey, my wife, Pastor Sophie, is on this morning. Miss Nicole Warren is on this morning. Miss Belva Johnson is on this morning. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My cousin, Robert Perryman, is rocking with us this morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all do me a favor. Y'all share. Y'all like. Y'all tag. Y'all invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Today It's a beautiful day. It's an exciting day. It's a lovely day. It really is. Shout out to Miss Bambi today. Shout out to Miss Kelly Johnson this morning. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, y'all like, y'all share, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part this morning. I greatly appreciate it. So listen, I got my coffee my wife made this morning. It's amazing. It's fantastic. It's good. But hey, get your coffee, your water, your juice, your tea, whatever you drink this morning. Get it. Let's get ready to have a great time in the law, but make sure you start a watch party today, all right? Hey, shout out to my Auntie Dorothy Perryman, who's on today. Good to see you, Ray Dot. Thank you so much for being on. I appreciate you. Coffee really is good. I think my wife deserve, deserves a, a hug, a kiss, and some other stuff. <laughs> Let me get to it this morning. <laughs> Minister Kim Simmons is rocking with us this morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You know, a number of years ago, um, maybe maybe five, six, maybe about five years ago, um, it was Valentine's Day. Um, the kids and I, we had gotten together and decided to do something for my wife. We were going to take her out to dinner. And we got down to P.F. Chang's and the line was just too long. So we decided that at, at that moment, I said, you know what? let's leave this place and let's just go to Las Vegas. And my wife was like, what? I said, let's just leave this place and go to Las Vegas right now. And she goes, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, we're going to Las Vegas. So we go down the street, go home, get some clothes, put them in a bag. And now we all four of us hop in the car, boom, headed to Las Vegas, we go. We get there, we don't have no reservation or nothing. We just went spontaneously. And we get there and get a hotel, check in. And I mean, it's at night when we get there, but we said we're going to just enjoy our time. Uh, while we're here, let us get some rest tonight. But come tomorrow, we're just going to explore Vegas. So we get up the next day and got up, and we just start to go and explore Vegas. And we get into this one store, Dooney and Burke store. My daughter, Treasure, is frustrated because we've been walking too far and we've been gone too long. It's cutting into her swimming time, so to speak. We get inside of the Dooney and Burke store and my wife is like a kid in a candy store. She's running around looking at all of the purses and she, she takes this one purse and she sets it on the counter. She says, honey, what do you think about this purse right here? I said, it, it don't matter, whatever you like, honey, it's, it's a nice looking purse. If you like it, it's all good. She gets another purse and she's looking at it. You know how y'all ladies do, open it up, look all through it and scan it out real good. And so then she says to me, honey, what do you think about this purse? I said, it's all good. If you like it, I like it. It's all good. Now, all of a sudden, she's gotten down to like the third or the fourth person that's on the, on the counter, and she's looking at them, and she's asking, what do you think? Hey, whatever you like, honey, it's all good. Now, my daughter, Treasure, is throwing a fit in the store. She's throwing a fit in the store because she wants to go back to the hotel so she can get in the swimming pool. She turns to me, and she says to me, Daddy, please stop, Mama. Please stop mama from buying all of these purses. She's going to buy every one of these purses. Please stop mama. She's going to spend all of our money. And I looked at my daughter and I said to her, you be quiet. You ain't got no money. She's spending my money. So by this time, the fifth purse is on the counter and my wife is saying to me, honey, which one do you like? And I'm saying, it doesn't matter to me. Whatever you like, it's all good. Secretly, I'm praying now that she don't go overboard and buy all five of these purses. Now, I got the money to pay for them. But I just didn't really want to pay for them at that moment. So now all of a sudden now, she says to me again, which one do you like? I said, honey, the choice is yours. Whatever you want, you can get. The choice is yours. So now all of a sudden, she, she takes three purses and sticks them back, and now she's got two in her hand. And I'm saying, okay, 
I, I, okay, that she wants us to do. And then she starts looking at the two person and she takes one and she puts it back and now she only buys the one. I pays for the one. And so when we got ready to leave and we were headed down, she was saying, I wish I should have got this. I should have got that. I said, the choice was yours. You could have got whatever you wanted. You could have got all five of them if you wanted to. And she's looking at me like, I could have got all five. You could have got all five. The choice is yours. About a year or so later, we end up going shopping somewhere. And I just wake up one morning and say, hey, get dressed. We're going to go shopping. And she gets dressed and we head out to this place. And she's, we stop at this one store. She goes in and we buy her purse in there. And then we go to another place and she's in this place like a kid in a candy store. She's all over the place shopping. Again, here my daughter Trezor is getting frustrated and upset because her mindset is mama is spending too much of the money. She's spending too much of our money. And I had to say to her, you don't have no money. She's spending my money. And so now she goes to my wife. Now my wife done bought a purse here. She's bought this, she's bought this. It's all on the counter. And my daughter goes up to her and says to her, Mama, you need to be considerate of dad. You're spending all of his money. And she turns to my daughter and tells her, you be quiet. My husband would not have brought me here if he could not afford what I'm putting on the counter. What she did was she learned from the previous trip that we had that the choice was hers. I came to tell you this morning that God has set before you the choices. The choice is yours. You can choose to be blessed or you can choose not to be blessed. The choice is yours. You can choose to live the good life or you can choose not to live the good life. The choice is yours. You can choose to live in a broken down, busted, disgusted relationship or you can choose to live in a relationship that's going to be healthy and going to be prosperous for you. The choice is yours. Many people's lives are where they are today simply because of the choices that they make. Some people make choices out of fear. That the choice, just, just, the, just the mere fact of making a decision is painful and scary for them. There are so many options for them to choose, and so here's what they do. They make a decision to choose something other than the right choice because of fear. And what they fail to realize is when it's time for you to make a right choice, when it's time for you to make decisions, God is always present in your life to help you make decisions. You might be saying, Pastor, he is? Yeah, the Bible tells us that God says it like this. He says, I set before you life and death blessings and curses and here's what he says choose life that you may live and that you and your seed gonna live and that you're gonna prosper that you're gonna have good success that you're gonna be blessed beyond measure i added those parts in there but he says i'm here to help you make choices he says choose life he says i set before you life and death blessings and curses and here's what he says choose life well, what's the life he's telling us to choose him He's telling us to choose him because to choose him is to choose everything that you need in life. To choose him is to choose his abundant life. To choose him is to choose his abounding life. To choose him is to choose everything that he has to offer. And there are many people today, you are afraid to make choices. Not realizing now that you make so many different choices every single day. There are people who who, whose job it is to make choices on the job. They're constantly making decisions, constantly making decisions. So when they get home, they don't want to make any more decisions. They want the decision to be placed on somebody else. But may I tell you today that no matter where you go, no matter where you are, that you're going to have to make decisions and that God himself is ever present to help you make the right decision. The decision that you make may be painful, may be difficult. You may have to stand alone but you have to make decisions. It's important for you to understand this. Many people make what I call not what I call, but what I research, cognizant decisions are. Many people are what we call cognizant bias. Cognizant bias is where you make decisions without even realizing you are making decisions. It's a way of thinking that you're not even realizing that you're doing. Okay. In, in a sense, it's your, your brain, your mind it's on automatic pilot. It's a conscious, your conscious mind is on automatic pilot. It just makes decisions based on repetition, based on the things that you have done before in the past. But watch this now, that can work against you. Okay, you might be saying, what do you mean, Pastor, it can work against me? Let me give an example. You could be unhappy with the car insurance that you have. Car insurance doesn't measure up. You've had an accident. It wouldn't pay, wouldn't do what they're supposed to do. But because now you've been with this insurance for so long, you don't want to switch. Another insurance comes along and tells you that, hey, we can save you money here. We can do this for you. We can do that for you. But you don't choose to do it because cognizantly, I've been with this one first. So you stick with that. So sometimes our cognizant decision or our cognizant bias can be against us and can hurt us. There are many people today, you are making decisions based on loyalty. 
to something that you shouldn't have never been loyal to in the beginning. You get no happiness out of the job. You, all you get is frustration and irritation and agitation. You got to deal with the people's attitude. And so you cognizantly makes this decision to show up for work every day because your mindset is, I need the paycheck. Have you ever stopped to think that maybe you need to peace more? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe you need the happiness more, that maybe you need to be treated right better? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe you need to live a better life and this ain't getting it? So here you are. You would rather go through the heartache, the pain. You'd rather experience stress and anxiety, heart attacks and strokes just because you're looking at this thing from the perspective, I need the paycheck. No, baby, you need the peace. It's a decision that you have to make. And many people are making decisions based on their automatic pilot. I've been doing this for a long time, so I stay with this thing. I've been doing this for a while. But then there are people who make decisions called confirmation bias. They make it out of confirmation biases. What, what is confirmation bias? See, if you've already predetermined that you don't like something, you will end up finding something to confirm the reason that you don't like it. Okay, let's, let's give you an example. If you are afraid of flying and you feel that if I get on a plane, uh, it's a possible chance I'm going to die. And so that's the reason I don't fly. So what you'll do is you'll go find statistics that tell you that it's better to drive than it is to fly. So guess what you've done? You've come up with something called a confirmation bias. This confirms the reason that I think the way that I think, the way I do what I, the reason I do what I do. This don't always work out right for you because sometimes the decisions that we make are not always good ones. Sometimes they are bad decisions. But here's what I found out about God is that when you are present, when you're ready to make decisions, he's already, he's always present. He's ready to help you make good decisions. He's ready to steer you away from the bad decision. He always causes something to go off on the inside of you to let you know that this may not be the right choice, that this may not be the right choice, this is the way to go, walking in it, go here, go there. And many people make these decisions based on a cognizant bias. They make these choices, these decisions based on the confirmation bias. But then sometimes people go a step further and they make decisions <laughs> based on other biases, based on what we call status quo biases. Status quo biases is, is the tendency to stick with, with what we know instead of choosing something different, even though we know what's different may be better for us. Okay, let me give an example. See, if you're old school and you've been comfortable with writing checks all your life, you, you're not going to switch to paying your bills with a credit card because watch now. I'm comfortable doing it this way. This other way may be easier. It may be better. It may free me up. It may be a simpler a task for me. But, be, but because I've been doing this for a long time, this is, this is status quo for me. I've been writing checks for a long period of time. So guess what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to stop writing these checks because I'm familiar with this. I'm comfortable with this. But you have forgotten that this is a new way that may be better. And because you refuse to learn a new way, you stick with an old, outdated, antiquated way that's holding you back. We got people today who don't even understand that church is not going back to the way that it used to be. They're not going back to the way that it used to be. It's not going back to the way where people are going to be uh, piled in a room and everybody's going to be jump, jerk, jiggling and shouting all up. Everything is shifting. Everything is changing. It's changed right before our eyes. If there are people who are comfortable with the status quo, I'm going to stay right there. May I tell you today that God is bigger than the status quo? He's over and above the status quo. He's beyond the status quo. He's ever increasing, always abounding. And that's the mentality that he wants us to have. It's not going back to the way that it used to be. And there are people today who refuse to make the decision to adjust. It's important to adjust. A young guy at my church, I was just talking one day. And I was saying, man, I'm just trying to get our people to just get on board with these things. You know, uh, it, it's, you know, it's a decision that needs to be made. And he says to me, Pastor, I don't understand. It's just a slight adjustment. When he said that it's just a slight adjustment, that thing stuck in my head. That I wonder how many people today are missing out on a, on a breakthrough because they refuse to make a slight adjustment. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how many people today have not gone to that next level because they refuse to make a slight adjustment. It's just a slight adjustment. It's just a slight alteration. It, it doesn't cost much. It's not going to be much. It's just a slight alteration, just a slight adjustment that will bring you out of your comfort zone but cause you to enter into a place that God has created for you. And so I'm so comfortable. There are people today who, who pay all their bills through, through money orders. They just they, they rather take the time Go to the store, get a five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar money order, pay the extra money for the money order, buy a stamp, buy an envelope, 
take the time to put all that information, put all that stuff in the mail, put all of it in the envelope, lick the envelope, wet the envelope, whatever you do, stick it in the mail and mail it that way. They're comfortable doing it that way because they've been doing it for years and they're not realizing there's some things that you have to do. They're just a slight adjustment. It's a decision that you have to make. When you are unwilling to make a decision, you are unwilling to go to your next level. When you are unwilling to make a decision, you are unwilling to take ownership. When you are unwilling to make a decision, you are unwilling to go to your next level. When you are unwilling to make a decision, you are unwilling to take ownership. And there are people today who are watching me that you just refuse to do something on another level. I'm comfortable with this. I'm happy with this. Listen to this. The Bible tells us that God is an ever-increasing God, that he's always abounding. He's always increasing. He's always, he's always going to the next. He's always trying to take his people to the next, but it requires us to make a choice. We got to make a choice. Making a choice gets you out of your comfort zone. I've been in my comfort zone for so long, Pastor. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And there are people today, God is opening up doors for you to walk in your breakthrough, to walk in your blessing. And you're pushing back because I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. You, you're so comfortable that you will miss out on your breakthrough when it hits you in the face because you're so comfortable. No, God wants you to choose today. You can choose today. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to be blessed today. You can choose to be excited today. The choice is yours. God is not going to come down and make you choose something. He's not going to come down and drag you by beating you over the head. Choose him. Choose her. Choose me. He's not going to do that because God himself is a gentleman. So guess what he does? He introduces himself to you. He presents himself to you. He shows you things that are about him that you didn't know. In other words, God becomes to, he starts to entice you and allure you to come and be a part of him. But at the end of the day, it's a choice that you have to make. To give your life to Christ, you have to make a decision. God, God didn't force you to make the decision. It was a decision that you had to make. To get married, it was a decision that you had to make. To give birth to children, it was a decision that you had to make. To get up this morning and get on this broadcast was a decision that you had to make. God didn't make you make a decision. You made this decision on your own. So you have to choose today that you're going to be blessed. Well, my wife got that revelation after we walked out of that Dooney and Burke store in Vegas that the choice was hers. She could have had all them purses if she wanted to. Well, it, she, it didn't stop right there next time. When we went, when we went to this next place of shopping, uh, uh, close to a year or so later, and she went in there, I'm talking about she, Sister Kim. She wore the she wore the coach store out. You hear me? She wore the coach store out. That sister had bracelets. That sister had glasses. That sister had purses. I mean, that she got shoes. This sister wore the coach store out. You hear me? And treasures over there. Dad, please stop, Mom. She's gonna spend all of our money. You be quiet. You ain't got no money. She's spending my money. She is wearing the coach store out. I'm talking about wearing it out. And all she's doing is calling me, honey, honey, come on. And I got to come up and pay for it now. And I gladly go right up there and pay for it. And the reason that I gladly go up there and pay for it is because she deserves it. Watch now. See, when you make the decision that you're going to choose God, he's willing to pay for the things that you are asking for. Matter of fact, he's already paid for. And here, here we are now. She done wore the coach store out. We go down the street a little bit. She wants to go into Michael Kuhl's store. And Treasure is like, and my son Javon is like, oh, God, we're going into another store. Hey, you two, be quiet. You're not going to mess up my late night action because y'all acting a fool. Be quiet. Let your mama shop test she drop. And she goes inside of the Michael Kuhl's store. And I promise you. She was wearing it out, too. I'm, when I say wearing it out, too, she was wearing it out, too. She came out of there with a couple of pairs of shoes, a couple of purses. She wearing it out. Watch. I'm just sitting here, and I'm like, Lord, you gave me enough money to go shopping. Please touch her heart. Well, she don't go overboard, and we don't have no gas to get back home. <laughs> we are buried by the food. Touch her heart. She's shopping till she dropped because she understood the last time the choice was hers. The choice was hers. Listen to this. The choice is yours. The choice is, is yours. God has given you the ability to choose whether you love somebody or not. 
He's giving you the ability to choose what type of car you want. See, he's not coming down and choosing the car for you. So stop being so religious. God, if this is the car you want me to have, he don't drive. You do. So he's giving you the choice. You choose the car that you want. You choose it. You choose it. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. What do you want today? The choice is yours. He says he gives you houses that you didn't build and vineyards that you didn't plant. The choice is yours. What do you want today? He tells you. He tells you that he gives you houses that are filled with all good things, but the choice is yours. What's the choice? I have to choose to be obedient to him. That's the choice. It doesn't matter your education level. It doesn't matter your history. It doesn't matter your, 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 your arrest record. It doesn't matter any of that. If you choose him today, your entire life will shift and change. The choice is yours. You can choose today. Nobody can make you stop smoking. You have to choose to stop smoking. I watch all these shows on television and people buy the patches, they buy the gum, and, and they say, well, this is going to stop me from choosing. This is going to stop me from smoking. Then I'm going to stop smoking. No, you're not. You, you're going to smoke eventually. As soon as a problem hit, you're going to smoke again. As soon as you get hungry and thirsty or after you have just eaten, you're going to smoke again. And the reason being is because you made a choice. In the same way that you can make a choice to smoke, you can make a choice to quit smoking. The choice is yours. God doesn't come down and make you stop smoking. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. There are many people today, you're trying to separate God from his blessing. Get this phone call last night from this preacher out of the blue. Don't even remember this dude's name, but he calls me out of the blue and says, is this the Marriott Hotel? What the heck? No, this ain't the Marriott Hotel. Is this Pastor Perryman? Yeah, this is Pastor Perryman. He tells me his name. This is Reverend so-and-so. How you doing? I'm trying to be courteous, but I don't know you. I don't know who you are. And he says, well, I was just wondering if you're still working at the Marriott Hotel. Immediately, I realized in my head, this dude is trying to figure out if I can get him a hotel room at a discount because I used to work there. No, I don't work there no more. I ain't worked there since 2010. Man, you been, what you doing now? I'm working full-time as a pastor. Oh, my God, you, you was always good, but you're working full-time as a pastor now. Man, that's been a long time. And so now he goes into this spiel of talking about how the church has changed and how people are going to have to stop preaching on the bless you messages and seeking God for his hand and they're going to have to start now seeking God for salvation. And so when I was walking down the stairs, I said to him, I said, well, what about me? I'm already saved. Why do I need to seek him for salvation? He pauses for a moment. I said, you cannot separate the two by this time I'm sitting in the living room and I'm sitting there. I said, you cannot separate the two. You cannot separate God from salvation. You can't separate the two. I said, that's what's the problem with many people. We are trying to separate God from who he really is. See, watch now. For those of you who are watching me today and you have the religious mindset, you have to understand what salvation means. Salvation is the Greek word, which, mean, which is soteria. The Greek word for salvation is soteria. That word means soundness, preservation, wholeness, peace, prosperity, wealth. You can't separate God from his wealth. You can't separate God from the prosperity. When I get God, I get all of this. So stop trying to separate him from that. This is why you're trying to work for stuff that you don't have to work for, that God said I gave to you freely because it's a free gift to you. So you have to choose the free gift. You have to choose life. You have to choose this. And if you don't choose this, it'll always be sitting, be sitting on the back burner and you'll miss out on what God has in store for you because you refuse to choose. Some of you have chosen and you've chosen wrong before and the choice that you made hurt you and hurt other people. So now here you are, you're faced with this choice again and you're afraid. Should I take another chance? Should I take a chance again? I dropped the ball over here. I made a mistake over here. I shouldn't have done that over there. What happens if I mess up over here? Well, the reason that it messed up over there is because you made a choice without God. Had you been listening to God in the beginning, you would not have failed in your decision because God is not a failing God. He's not a God who will cause you to make bad decisions and cause you to fail at anything. But the reason you failed is because you did not follow the instruction. It's because you didn't listen to him. But if you take this opportunity to listen to him now, you won't fail at all. There are those of you who are watching me today, you failed at marriage and you're wondering, should I take a leap of faith again? Should I get married again? Well, may I tell you, the Bible said it's better to marry than to burn. What does that mean, it's better to marry than to burn? 
It's better for you to marry than to burn in your lustful desires. That's what the Bible talks about. It's better for you to marry than to burn in your lustful desires. But it's also better for you to marry than you for you to burn in hell. So the choice is yours. Let me just talk to the men for a moment. See, lady, see, man, if, if she's good enough to wash your clothes, if she's good enough to cook your food, if she's good enough now for you to ask her to perform wifely duties, she should be good enough for you to put a ring on it. And if you are not, if you are too afraid to put a ring on it, then let her go and be with somebody who will appreciate her, somebody who will love her, somebody who will protect her and cover her. Let her go so somebody else can pick her up. You are a hindrance because you are too afraid to make a decision. Who told you that a decision was going to be easy? Who told you that the choice was going to be easy for you? It's not going to be easy. Easy. There's going to be some rough patches. There's going to be some rough trails. There's going to be some rough, some rough intersections in the relationship. It's going to be rough. But you can always make your way through it. You can always navigate your way through it. You can always overcome it. You can always push past it. You can always win. You just got to have God in this thing with you. So stop holding back because of a decision you made in the past. There are women today who are watching me. You made decisions in the past and you got what a guy. And it didn't work out, and now you're afraid to commit again. Listen to this. It's time for you to make a decision. Go ahead on and commit so that your life can be transformed and blessed. <laughs> Let me get out of here this morning. Let me get out of here this morning. Appreciate every one of y'all. Let me get out of here today. <laughs> I pray you were blessed today. I pray you were encouraged. I pray you were motivated today. <laughs> Listen, let me give some shout-outs to people, and then we're going to let y'all go today. Hey, shout-out uh, to Miss Tiffany Barnes, who's on today. Shout-out to Miss Jackie Hankins, who's on today. Shout-out to Minister Kim Simmons. Shout-out to Miss Shannon Goosby, who's on today. Miss Kelly Johnson, Miss Karen Yates is on today. Good to see you guys this morning. Appreciate you so much. Listen, if I missed you, you know I will go back and say good morning to you. Shout-out to Miss Renee Edwards. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys so very much for all that you do. But listen, it's time for me to pray for you today. Miss Jennifer Smith is on as well. Elbert Coleman is rocking with us this morning. Good to see you. So listen, let me let me pray today. My prayer uh, uh, today for you. My prayer today for you. Oh, I forgot the Haywards are on this morning. Shout out to uh, Pastor Haywood. Shout out to Prophetess Haywood. Good to see you guys. Thank y'all so much for being on. Clinton Powell is rocking with us. Miss Michelle McClung is rocking with us today. Good to see you guys. Thank y'all so much. But listen, I got to pray for you. Don't go anywhere. Please don't go anywhere. I got to give somebody their day today, so don't go anywhere, all right? Listen, if it is your birthday today, put it on the screen so that I don't forget you, all right? So if it's your birthday today, put it on the screen so that I don't forget you, all right? Shout out to, uh, 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 I was about to say, Pastor Salilo Jones. <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know. Let, let me pray right now for you. I'm praying today that you would choose the life that God has in store for you. Eddie Hayward, good to see you, man. But that you would choose the life that God has for you. That, that's my prayer for you today, all right? So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for just being the great I am. I thank you for just being all that you desire us to be. I thank you for being the light of our path. I thank you, Father, for correcting and ordering our steps today. But God, I pray today that you would help us to just make right decisions. Help us to stick with you. Help us to lean and depend on you. For you said if we lean and depend on you, that you would direct our path today. So God, I just thank you for doing that now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for taking the country of Belize and blessing it on an amazing scale. I thank you, Lord, for blessing every Belizean citizen who's watching me today. God, and I thank you that even as I'm praying now, you're pouring your anointing on their lives. And Lord, I thank you for, for healing Miss Bambi's husband, I thank you, Lord, for raising him up, God. And I thank you for performing miracles in his life, oh God. And I thank you, Lord, that you yourself are the heart surgeon. And I thank you for all that you have done for this family. Now, Father, I pray for my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I pray for my town's peace and prosperity, my town's healing and deliverance. I pray for grace and mercy to flow throughout my town, God. And I give you praise and glory for it. Now, Father, let your anointing touch every home in my town. And God, I thank you for it. Now, Father, we lift up the Delta as a whole. We pray for peace and prosperity and healing and hope that will flow throughout the Delta now. And Lord, we give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, I got to give somebody their day today. Got to give somebody their day today. Want everybody to know how much... Uh, we appreciate you so very much for tuning in today. 
We do. We appreciate you today. But listen, let me give somebody their day today. Uh, today, 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 <laughs> today is, <laughs> I messed around. <laughs> let me quit messing around. <laughs> today is Miss Tiffany Barnes Day. Today is Miss Tiffany Barnes Day. It's her day. We thank you so much, Miss Tiffany, for being on. I appreciate you for all you do. Today is Clinton Powell's day. Shout out to him. Today is Miss Michelle McClung's day. Shout out to her. And today is Miss Renee Edwards' day. Whatever they want, they get. Whatever they need gets supplied. It's their day today. All right. Hey, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much for tuning in. But listen, y'all do me a favor. Share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party. You can start a watch party while you're watching me. Where other people's lives can be transformed and blessed. All right. So y'all do that. But listen, get your seed in the ground today. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Get it in the ground. Don't let the devil talk you out of your giving, all right? Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Hey, shout out to Miss Beverly Jean. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, if you want to sow directly to me, you can do it through the Cash App. Cash App is the dollar sign, Pastor Perryman. Again, the Cash App is the dollar sign, Pastor Perryman. You can also sow to my wife if you like. Her cash app is the dollar sign, Pastor Sophia. Listen, that's how we live. We live through the free will offerings of the people who give to us. We don't rob the ministry. We don't do anything like that. Our members can tell you that we believe in an integrity when it comes down to church and things like that. It's an integral thing for us. So, hey, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. But again, go back, share this video for those of you on IG. Hey, I know it's not a title on there, but today's title is The Choice is Yours. So listen, go back, watch this video, share it with other people, all right? We greatly appreciate you, all right? Hey, shout out to Ishmael Terry, who's on today. You be the bomb guy. Good to see you, man. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We appreciate you, man. Hey, I'm praying for you, brother, uh, that, hey, that you're, 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 you're singing in, you're singing, um, uh, 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 you're singing itinerary would increase in this season, man. All right. So God bless. Y'all have a great day. Love y'all. And we'll see y'all again tomorrow. Don't forget, get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. Hey, you got my number, Ismail. You can holler at me whenever you get time, man. All right. Love y'all. Be blessed.